Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. I'm Joe. In this video, we will be continuing our playthrough of the game Old School Tactical Volume 4, The Italian Front. This is from Flying Pig Games, designed by Shane Logan and a Mark H. Walker game. This is part two. It will be the second turn of the first scenario of the game. The previous video is up on the channel. If you did not see it and would like to see, the, see this scenario from the beginning, I would recommend checking that one out. But if you just want to pick it up midstream, you can also do that if you like. This was a nine-turn scenario. We are now entering turn number eight. Uh, each side lost one unit, so both have two casualties. This is an infantry-only uh, scenario, so there are no tanks. All the casualties will be taken by either crude support weapons or infantry squads, or in the case of the British, commando squads. And we're going to get underway, start our turn. This is turn number eight. We are going to roll two dice for both sides. Black for the Italians, white for the British. And we get an eight and a six. So the British have an eight. They win initiative. So they will now roll to see how many impulse points they get. They get 11, which is a great roll. And to that, they add one. I will mark that here. It's off camera for you guys, but trust me, I'm marking it so that we know what they have. The Italians get five, which is not great. So they will most likely be passing until they get a little closer to what the British have. So the British have a chance here to make some hay. Now, I did, did make some mistakes in part one. Uh, thank you to the people who pointed those out. And I will try to do things a little better because some of the things I did are interesting mechanics that I did not obviously apply correctly. The Italians need to basically survive this turn because in turn seven they get some reinforcements and might be able to do a little bit extra damage with that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, give an example. So we have uh, a commando squad here equipped with a satchel charge. They are going to use something called stealth movement. The stealth movement, you declare it, and then you use half your movement points, and you round down any fractions. Can't be used in a group move unless both units have the ability. Now, commando units have this ability, which is why you can use it. This prevents the enemy from using opportunity fire, and you just mark it with moved. Now, one of the other mistakes I made in the previous video was allowing units to take two fire actions after moving. If that is not correct, you get two, two actions, basically. So you would get a move action and a fire action, two fire actions, or a move and an assault move would also be something that you could do legally. So we're going to take this unit right here. We're going to move them by stealth movement, one, two, and we will mark them as being moved. That is one impulse point, leaving us with 10. Now, the Italians have a total of five, so they need to parcel them out a little bit. But I think a good use for, for at least one of them right now, or two in this case, would be a group fire, because this heavy machine gun is a crude weapon, and they have a rifle squad, so those are basically two units. And Sergeant Altieri is in the same hex with them, so his command range of one there is adequate for them to do a group action, and that group action is going to be to fire on our commando squad. Now the commando squad is in the open. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They are out of range of the light machine gun here with Lieutenant Cantori, Cantatori, sorry. But they are well within the range of the 10 hex range of that heavy machine gun and the 4 hex range of the Rifle. So they get three plus three is six. There is no defensive benefit to that terrain for the commando unit. Their defense is a four. So that is six to four. They will also get a plus one DRM on the roll for uh, Sergeant Altieri, but that's on the die roll. So we're going to roll here. We're in the plus two column and we get a six. And a six in our plus two column, six is a broken result. So we roll against their gut check rating, which is a six. So if they roll higher than a six, they are not broken. A five or less, they are broken. And they got a seven, so they are not broken. These guys have now fired. 
And because it was a group move, that cost them two impulse points, leaving them with three. But I do feel like that was worth an attempt. So we go back to the British now. And what they're going to do is they will have our sniper here. He is going to take a shot at Sergeant Altieri. Okay, so he's got a firepower of two. When you attack a leader, it gets doubled, so it's a four. The range is eight, so he's well within range. He's only four hexes away. And Altieri's defense is a four, so uh, he's also in some brush, so that gives him a plus one. So his defense is a five, so we are in the minus one column. So we need a high roll here for the Brits. They get a five. That is probably not going to do anything. And in fact, it does not. And I forgot to upgrade the role for the Italians due to the DRM for Altieri. Speaking of that, it would have it would have still been a broken. And obviously they didn't break because they passed their gut check. There was no harm, no foul there. And we'll mark a fired action on our sniper. And put that there. That is another impulse gone for the Brits. They have nine left. The Italians, I think, uh, will pass, and they're going to try to maybe get some, um, potentially get some opportunity fire, although it seems unlikely given the given the fact that the uh, Brits have uh, commando units. And speaking of which, they have one that did not make it on map in turn one, so we're going to move him on map right now. And I'm actually going to move this dice tower back over here where it was previously because I want to bring him in right here. So he's going to move one, two, actually, let's move him in right here. That way he can go one, uh, one, two, and then up here would be three, and rough terrain. Yeah, that's a two. That's rubble, so he can't do that, but he could go here. So he'll go here, and that would be four. One, two, three, plus one for the increase in elevation is four. We mark him moved. That's, they're down to eight now. The Italians, uh, they could use an action to attempt for cover. The problem there being they only have three left. And again, I want to use, save those for fire actions. So they're going to pass again, meaning the British are up once again. This time, let's take let's take this squad, and we're going to send them along the bottom, I think. So we're going to go one. This is farmland, which is only one on our, uh, for one for foot. So we're going to go one, two. We'll avoid here because this is more than one, I think. Yes, that's two. So one, two, three, four. He'll be right here. Now the rubble is, uh, or rough, is uh, not blocking or line of sight. But this machine gun here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is screened off by these two buildings right here. So he has an, he has an approach in this direction. Now he, in theory, could have fired with his machine gun. But again, I think their best bet is to wait, wait it out a little bit. And maybe get a better a better opportunity. So that leaves the Brits with seven. We go back to the Italians. They still have three. One, two, three, four. He could fire. He's got a firepower of three. This guy, he's he's higher elevation as well. Um, because he's at level two, and the target here is at level one. So maybe we should have this guy fire. It's not a great opportunity, but we'll take a we'll take a crack at it. So his firepower is a three. They don't get any defensive bonus because of the elevation. They get a plus one on the die roll. So they're going to roll. It's three against four, so it's minus one column, and they get a plus one on the on the die roll. And they roll the seven. So that will uh, be modded up to an 8, and an 8 in the minus 1 column is broken. So the British will again have to roll to see if they can avoid that fate. They need a 6 or better. And they got a, <laughs> they got a 6. It looked like it was going to be a 2 there for a moment. 
So that will uh, obviously cause this guy to be marked fired. The Italians have two impulse points. The British have seven. It is the British uh, turn. I forgot to put a moved on this guy right here. So we've got one unit that hasn't done anything yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to use stealth movement here with, uh, with this commando unit. So they're going to go one, two. And we'll put a moved marker on them. And that leaves the British with six. The Italians, they can't see them. They really can't do much except maybe move. They really can't do much either um, unless they do a, a group move, which would use our last two impulse points. But that might be worth it if we move here. Because then we could also move here and we would then have line of sight to this unit, which is trying to sneak up in this direction. So maybe we'll do that. We're going to take a group move and we're going to move inside this building. I'm going to put a move on here. That's going to use the last two impulses for the Italians. So the rest of the turn will be British moves. And we have one unit that has yet to, uh, to do anything here, anything at all. And that would be these guys right here. So let's have, actually, let's have our sniper take another crack at uh, Sergeant Altieri here. So we know it's a minus one and we're going to roll and we get a seven, which in the minus one column is a shaken. So we'll let him roll to see if he shakes. The, uh, the Italian gut check is a nine, which is not a layup and he gets a three. So he is shaken. And I believe that means he uh, has to surrender since they don't have an action with which to even try to rally him. So he's going to be, he's going to surrender and be out of the game. And I hope I'm doing that right. I think I am. We'll find out because I'm sure people will let me know. So he's going to be now used. And the Italians have three casualty points now. Okay, so they have lost their leader, which makes things a little bit more interesting for us. We'll have our commandos fire again at these guys, or fire at these guys. I don't think we did that yet. So their defense is a uh, a three. We'll fire at the uh, at the machine gun, I guess. Defense is a three. They get a plus one for the. Uh, broken terrain their firepower is a six so we will be in the uh, two column here and we get an eight now an eight in the two column here's the two column eight is casualty so can the machine gun be reduced it can all right so the machine gun has been reduced these guys are now used. They fired once. So that leaves the British with four. I think, did I remember to use one for that? I don't think I did. So they're at four. They have four, uh, four moves left. We can have McHale move. Let's do that. Now that, now that their firepower has been reduced, we're going to move, and you know what? We'll just do a stealth stealth group move, which will be two impulse points. Actually, it's not a stealth move because there's only one unit. The, the light machine gun is an attached, is an attached uh, support weapon, not a crude weapon. So they can go one. Two. Stop right here. Slap a moved on them. That leaves the British with two impulse points left. And let's see. We've got a couple places I want to fire from. And I think it'll be this one and this one. So let's do this one first. We're going to try to hit this machine gun and knock it out. So his defense is still a three. 
They have a firepower of seven. They get a plus one for the leader on the die roll. So a seven to four is, uh, as I drop a die, seven to four is the three column. And that's going to be a decent number. It's a six and a one is a seven. Gets modded or you know, DRM'd up to an eight. We're in the three column. Eight in the three column is casualty and shaken. But since he's already reduced, he just gets removed. And a support weapon or a crude support weapon, I think, is one casualty point. Let me check. Full squad or crude weapon is two points. So they're up to five. They're up to five. And our... Rifle squad is all alone now in that hex. And let's have this guy fire here. Um, he's up. That's an uphill fire. So that's going to be a minus one fire on the die roll modifier. They are in an, or, uh, I want to say orchard, but it's a vineyard. They're in a vineyard. And a vineyard gives them a plus two defense. So that three is going to become a five. Their firepower is a six. Plus one is seven, seven minus two, seven minus five is two, and they get a minus one DRM. And a five in the two column becomes a four, which means that it's nothing. So the DRM did them in there, and that is the end of turn eight. So the next turn, we will get uh, reinforcements for the Italians, as that is the last of the impulse points for the British. So the current status is casualty points for the Italians, five. Casualty points for the British, two. And uh, we are entering turn seven, where the Italians will be getting four squads of infantry, Sergeant Rossi, and a light machine gun. They will be entering from the west side of the map. Okay, we're on to turn number seven here. So the first thing, of course, is to roll to see who has initiative. I have adjusted the shot, as you can see, to, sh to show this unit down here because I didn't do that last turn. So now you can see all the units on the board. And let's see what we get here. And we get a tie, so you re-roll all ties. And so we will roll again. And it is seven to six here in favor of the British. So the British keep initiative. And so we'll roll for impulse points. They get a four. So they're going to have a tough turn here. They're down to five because they do get a plus one. Now, the because of the additional reinforcements, the Italians actually get to roll three dice. And they get ten. So they have 10 impulse points. So it is 10-5 in terms of impulse points. And the British get to go first. Well, let's, uh, let's be bold. Let's try to move here. We're going to use stealth movement to move here. Now, I think that's okay. We're going up a level. Uh, one plus cost of terrain. So that's clear terrain. So we can do this. We're going to go up to level two. And by using stealth movement, that prevents them from opportunity firing on us, which this one could do. Uh, I believe this one could also have done that. And obviously that one could do it as well. So they had options there. So that's going to leave the British with four. Now the Italians have, as I mentioned uh, earlier, they have some reinforcements coming in, so we're going to move those guys in right now. So we will be taking a group move for two impulse points to get these guys on map ASAP, and that is going to be right over here. We have Sergeant Rossi. He's attached to a rifle squad. They're going to bring a second rifle squad and a light machine gun attached to the uh, first rifle squad. Let's do it that way. That way they, they have a leader and a squad with an, with a support weapon. So they'll go one, two, three, four. And we'll put a move marker. And because that was a group move, 
That costs them two, leaving them with eight impulse points. Back to the British. Uh, now, because the limited actions that I mentioned earlier that I didn't play correctly in the first video, one of those is an assault move. So they're going to do an assault move to move into this hex. And I'm going to pull this off. They're, they're used, so they can't do anything else. But we're going to put a uh, melee marker on here to denote that we will be having melee combat at the end of the turn. That is one impulse point, leaving the British with three. Now, one, two, three, four. And one, two. By doing that, they're in the range of where we could have a, another control hex. One, two, three. So I need to check to see if it would be right here. So the way I was going to do that is I'm just going to roll one die. And if it's odd, it is a control hex. Even it is not. It is odd. So I'm going to put a control marker right here. So that is our second control hex. There are four total. And as British units make their way up the map, they will be revealed. But for now, we're going back to the Italians who have eight movement points left. They will move another. They will move another unit in here. Or perhaps we should do something else. Let's. Let's see. They have three movement points. So moving from a building. Moving into a light structure is two. Moving into a heavy structure is two. They're currently in a heavy structure. We're going to move them up into this light structure as a group move, which again will cost two. And we're going to, or is it a group move? It is actually, it is not a group move. So I screwed that up the last time. This is not a group move. This is a regular move, which only costs one. So that leaves them with seven. Now they are in... And now they're in an area where they can actually fire on the British right here. And that terrain does not block. This terrain here does not block. So the Brits have a bit of a challenge now in trying to cross this area to get up to that, to that one. So since that is the case, let us have... We're going to have Mc, Mc, uh, McPhail's men here fire on this rifle unit to see if we can knock it out. So they are in open terrain. Uh, actually, they're beside a crest line. So because they're not on the crest line, they, I don't think they can see them. If I remember correctly from the line of sight rules, they're kind of in the shadow of this. So we'll have this, this unit fire instead. Or you know what? Instead of that, we're going to do a, we're going to do a stealth move. And just move two to here, which will now allow us to use our satchel charge. So that leaves the British with two. Now, from the Italian standpoint, do I stay here and uh, take that, or should I try to either move out of there or um, take, you know, to fire at them or something to kind of prevent that from happening? think what they will do is now uh, just so that we can see satchel charges in action I'm actually not going to move this if I were actually playing as the Italians here I probably would retreat this unit and just accept some opportunity fire from the from the this unit we could also have opportunity fired with this guy oh no we couldn't because we used stealth move that was the point Joe all right so but they do have them where they can shoot at them, so maybe they should do that to fire some support because they do have Lieutenant Cantatori to give them a plus one on the die roll, and they have uh, four firing on four. They are in brush. Brush gives them a plus one defense, so that would be four on five, which would be a minus column minus one, but they do get. A plus one, so we'll we'll do it. And they get a seven plus one is eight. Eight in the minus one column. 
is broken. So the commandos here will have to roll. They need a six or above. They get an 11, so they're not broken. These guys are now used. Uh, that might not have been the best choice in thinking about it because one, two, three, four. That's what the British will do here. So that leaves them with six. They're going to move up. One, two, three, four. That leaves us with only one action. So let me put a moved marker here. What this means now is I can either use a satchel charge here or here. And I might use it here because they're in a structure and you have the, there's a rule for structure collapse. So they could actually collapse the house or building down on top of the, the troops inside. Plus they have a leader. This guy's not that much of a threat. Obviously these three will not be able to do anything at all because that is the situation we're in at the moment. Back to the Italians. What do we want to do now? Well, let's see if we're going to take a crack at this, this stack. Well, they wouldn't necessarily know which one is going to use a satchel charge. So let's have this guy fire here. So that's three firing on a four uh, plus one on the die roll, or, or I'm sorry, plus one defense. So that's three on five. That's a minus two. Let's roll the black dice for them. Ooh, a 10. A 10 in the minus two column is a casualty. So that actually is a massive result for them. They have reduced that, and that is a casualty point for... British, they're up to three. Now we have to, uh, so that takes the Italians down to five impulse points. Now we're going to do our satchel charge here. Um, although maybe that should re that should rearrange my thinking and have them do it here instead. So that's what we're going to do. I only have one. I could also assault here, but that seems dumb or assault here, which also seems dumb because I have a satchel charge with a firepower of 10. So they're going to use their satchel charge here. And it is a 10 attacking a 3. They do not get any bonus because they're in clear terrain. So that is the 7 column, which is the highest column. Basically anything 8 or higher kills the unit. So they're going to roll and see if we get an 8 or higher. And they get a 9. So this unit has been destroyed. The satchel charge did its job. And that is two more casualty points for the Italians. They are up to seven. And at five, I, I forgot to do this, but at five, they actually lose one impulse point. So I'm going to move them down to four because they should have taken a minus one on their impulse roll. So they have four left. The British are done. So four moves for the Italians. They still have two units to move on. So we'll move one of those on right now. And we'll do, we should probably come in more toward the south. So we'll start here. One, two, three, four. We'll put a moved on here. That leaves them with three. Then we'll take this guy and we'll do uh, one, two, three, four. And put a moved on that one as well. That leaves them with two. Now we can look for firing opportunities. Uh, one, two, three, four. I can't see that one. Uh, hmm. So we're going to roll for cover. And we'll start with this guy right here. So you, the way this works is you roll 1d6. You spend an impulse point, you roll 1d6. On a 5 or a 6, he gets cover, which adds 1 to the defense. That's a 1, so that failed. They leave. They only have 1 left. And we will try it again, same unit. And a 3, so that, that failed both times. So that is going to be the end of turn 7. So our situation at the end of turn 7, the British still at 2 casualty points. Uh, three casualty points rather and the uh because they they got a reduced reduced squad right there and the italians are up to seven and that is the end of turn seven so we will be going to turn number six i will do one more turn in this video
So I just realized that I went through all of that. Oh, we're moving on to turn six. I took all the markers off, and then I remember. Then I realized, hey, we have a melee to resolve. So we're going to have some melee combat. So we'll need to go through that. And then I might actually just wrap up this video, and we'll see um, about a part three. Um, but, you know, first things first, let's take care of this, uh, this melee so you can see how that gets resolved. Okay, so melee combat is actually resolved when it's infantry only on the infantry combat table. So we have the British here who have a rifle squad and a light machine gun taking on an Italian rifle squad. So this is going to be relatively simple. You add up the firepower for both sides, that's seven and three and the defense for both sides, which is four and three. And then each side will roll to attack, and basically what you do is you resolve it. Now both get two, plus two firepower modifiers for being melee. And that is, that is the only one that we're gonna have in this particular combat. There are, it is possible to have other modifiers, but in this one, it's just a simple, straight up, it's resolved, at the same time. So the British are a, are a nine against a three, that's a plus six. And the Italians are a five against a four. Oh, actually, yeah, nine. Seven plus two is nine. Nine against three and five against four. So the British are in the six column, which is a five and six column. And the Italians are in the two column. So I'm going to roll them at the same time since it's simultaneous and we'll see what we get. So both, both sides didn't roll particularly well. The British got a four and a four in the five column is a shaken. So that would shake them, which means they're going to be eliminated unless they pass their gut check, which will roll momentarily. Now they got a five and a five in the two column is actually a shaken as well. So the British, the Brits will also have to roll here. So let's roll the British first because theirs is a little bit less uh, important, I guess. And they rolled snake eyes, so they do not pass their gut check and they will be shaken. Now the Italians need a nine or better and they got a five, so they are eliminated because they surrender on a shaken. Now what I also could ha could do, since I have this luck card, I could play this luck card, and as you can see, it says on edge, enemy troops are tense, play after moving a unit or group at the end of the move, all adjacent enemy units must take a gut check. Becoming shaken if failed cannot be used by a single person counter. Now, interesting thing and i forgot to do this but i could have done it when these guys got right here i could have made all three of these guys take a gut check and if they failed it they would have been eliminated but by being the only survivors of the melee the british win that particular fight and that would be the end of the turn and i think what i may do i'm going to wrap this video up but i think what i may do if there is enough interest so if i get I don't know, 10 different people saying they want to see this via comments, then I will uh, do kind of an AAR quick play resolution of the rest of this turn, or the rest of this uh, scenario, actually. I'll play it out, and then uh, at the end of each turn, I'll do a quick recap so that that, that that would move things along pretty quickly. And then once I got to maybe turn two or something, I would actually let... Um, I would actually show the full the final turns in full so you could see the end of it the alternative would be to do something from for the empire and something that would in that game that would also feature armor so that we could see some tanks in in there as well and maybe some anti-tank guns etc so um i kind of waver like you know i enjoy playing the game obviously but playing the game for video is different than just playing the game for myself and um, the main purpose of the videos is to show the gameplay but also allow you guys to see it being played maybe it helps you play maybe you just it maybe it helps you determine whether you want to buy the game or not buy the game or whatever 
I, of course, recommend this game and this series. I think they're fantastic. Uh, so again, make feel free to comment and let me know your thoughts. I'm, I'm leaning strongly towards doing something from For the Empire with, you know, some of the more um, urban terrain and also, you know, getting the, uh, the Canadians or the Kiwis in there. Uh, there's also the American scenarios at Anzio that would be interesting to play. Um, but I do have a lot of other games I also want to want to do for video. So, like I said, please let me know your thoughts. So the more comments we get, the better idea I'll have which way you guys, the audience, want to, uh, to see things go here. But that's going to do it for this one. I'm Joe. This is the Hexed Encounter channel. Thank you for watching. And until next time, as always, happy gaming.